In today's episode, you'll see, among other things, Elon Musk's Starlink satellites are falling to Earth at a record pace, and scientists have sounded the alarm. One of the most impressive humanoids has a new version, the Figurizer 3, which folds clothes, washes dishes, and talks like a human being. China will sink artificial intelligence and servers in Shanghai, in the world's first commercial underwater data center. The robot, which reads the wind and shoots with millimeter precision, challenges champion human archers in South Korea. The world's first specimen, a high-pulse microwave robot, has been unveiled and is capable of frying swarms of drones in seconds. Shall we try to understand all of this? Hello, impressed gentlemen and ladies. I'm Carlos Alves, and you're watching Incredible Reality. If you like our channel, go ahead and leave your like. If you can, share and leave a comment to help with engagement. Without further ado, let's get to the video. I'm Carlos Alves, and for a few episodes, you won't be seeing my face around here. That's because I had an implant put in my head. And no, it's not a Neuralink implant. Actually, it's a transplant. I went to get a hair transplant to look a little better for you. The line between man and machine became thinner during the 2025 Hyundai Cup Korean Archery Championship. South Korea's legendary archers faced an autonomous shooting robot for the first time. Created by Hyundai Motor Group, the robot is equipped with wind sensors, high-speed cameras, and predictive control systems. It analyzes the direction and strength of the gusts in real time, adjusting the angle and tension of the bow in fractions of a second. After the storm, it recalibrated and delivered perfect 10 yes, proving its accuracy. And to make this event even more symbolic, Spot, the robot dog from most online Amex, a subsidiary of Hyundai, took part in the show by carrying arrows and equipment during the competition. According to Hyundai, the technology was born from automotive autonomous driving systems, which are adapted for environmental reading and real-time response. The same logic applied to self-driving cars out there has now been transferred to archery. Hyundai has sponsored South Korea's archery team since 1985. For years, they've integrated robotics and precision engineering into human training. These technologies were decisive for South Korea's dominance at the Paris 2024 Olympic Games, where the country won gold in all five archery categories. The robot versus human archer duel was more than a tech demo. It symbolized the future, sport, and engineering. Even so, the humans won the competition 55 to 54. Yes, it was a close result. But even with perfect sensors and advanced algorithms, Hyundai's robot lost to something that still can't be programmed, the intuition and emotional control that humans have under pressure. Figura Air unveiled its new humanoid robot, the Figura 03, and I was impressed by its fluid movements. Able to fold clothes, wash dishes, and converse naturally, the robot marks a major step toward human-machine coexistence. This applies to both home and work. Standing at 1.68 meters tall with a lighter and more flexible structure that has been redesigned so it can move smoothly both in homes and industrial warehouses. Figura 03 is truly a new version. It's not just a new name. But what really impresses is the way it perceives, understands, and reacts. That's thanks to ERIX, the company's internal artificial intelligence, which uses vision, language, and movement to learn by observing humans. Each hand of Figura 03 has cameras and fingertip sensors that can detect changes as small as 3 grams, like a paperclip's weight. This precision lets the robot pick up glasses without breaking them, adjust its grip on tools, and handle fragile objects with unusual delicacy for machines. The main cameras now process twice as many frames per second, with a 60% larger field of view and 25% less latency, which gives you faster reflexes and a remarkably realistic sense of space. All of this makes the robot look and also behave in an eerily human way. Unlike traditional industrial models, the Figura 03 features a washable fabric body with foam padding rather than exposed metal. This reduces the risks of accidents and interactions with people, Another highlight is its wireless charging system. Coils embedded in its feet allow it to recharge its energy when touching a base, reaching up to 2 kW of power. A full charge guarantees five hours of continuous operation. Communication has also evolved. The new speaker is four times more powerful and the microphone has been relocated to capture voices clearly. The result is a smooth, almost natural conversation without the metallic sound typical of voice assistants. In corporate settings, Figura 03 offers efficiency, 
Its actuator's double speed and torque over the previous generation, matching a human worker's pace. According to the engineers, it can sort parts, handle plastic, package products, or even operate machines with a lot of precision and safety. Most humanoids are still partly handmade, but Figura EI is betting on mass production. Model 03 is the first to be produced on an assembly line. With die casting and injection molding, this significantly cuts costs and assembly time. The company's new factory, BOTQ, can produce 2,000 robots annually, aiming for 100,000 units by 2029. At the center of the tech war, a 10-ton robot becomes the deadliest blend of artificial intelligence-directed energy and military autonomy. Leonidas AR combined Epirus' high-power microwave cannon with General Dynamics Land Systems' TRX electric hybrid vehicle. This created the first autonomous ground robot able to neutralize drone swarms in seconds. Unlike conventional weapons that fire missiles or projectiles, this robot emits concentrated microwave pulses that can instantly fry electronic circuits, thus interrupting communications, sensors, and navigation systems of dozens or even hundreds of drones simultaneously. The software-defined system allows real-time adjustment of range, power, and frequency based on threat type or target distance. In the field, operators can, in quotes, create safe zones, which are areas protected against friendly interference or update the system remotely without taking the robot out of operation. The TRX, the platform that carries the microwave cannon. It's an unmanned hybrid electric vehicle capable of traveling 480 kilometers on a single charge and reaching 72 kilometers per hour, even on rough terrain. It features 360-degree radar sensors on board artificial intelligence and autonomous navigation, enabling operation without human intervention in combat zones. Some military analysts see this as the start of a new era, war in the electromagnetic spectrum, known as the sixth domain. Here, victory won't go just to the fastest shooters, but to those who master the invisible, waves, signals, and frequencies. Yeah, it sounds like science fiction. A gigantic pod full of artificial intelligence servers submerged in the sea, operating silently beneath the waves. And that's exactly what China has planned. In the next few days, they're going to submerge their first commercial underwater data center. A technological milestone offers unmatched energy efficiency, but also significant environmental concerns. Highlander leads an initiative to address one of the digital age's biggest challenges, heat. Traditional data centers, that is, those on land, consume colossal amounts of energy just to keep the servers cool. The Chinese proposal is simple, but quite bold. To use the ocean itself as a natural cooling system, taking advantage of cold currents to dissipate heat without the need for mechanical ventilation. According to Yang Yi, the vice president of Highlander, underwater operations can reduce by up to 90% the energy consumption dedicated to cooling. And yes, it's a gigantic leap in efficiency. The Shanghai module, constructed on a dock and ready for launch, will serve clients like China Telecom and state-owned computing and artificial intelligence firms. Powered by offshore wind, the system will be nearly fully sustainable, with over 95% of its energy from renewables. But the project is more than just technical innovation. It symbolizes China's strategic move to reduce its carbon footprint, while also dominating the critical infrastructure of the new era of artificial intelligence. While companies like Microsoft, for example, had already tested the idea on a small scale. With that experimental project over in Scotland, which happened in 2018, no nation until now had tried to take this proposal to a commercial scale. Building a data center that can withstand the ocean is an engineering and survival challenge. The steel capsule, coated with glass flakes to resist saltwater corrosion, will be linked to the surface by a technical elevator for maintenance and equipment transport. Although the technology appears clean, environmentalists warn about the risks of accumulated heat, the operation's invisible byproduct. Marine ecologist Andrew Watt from the University of Hull warns that local heating alters marine species behavior, attracting some and driving others away. Ringlander's studies show temperatures near the pilot modules have stayed within safe limits. Despite challenges, the goal is clear. China aims to make the ocean an extension of the digital cloud. In short, a cold, stable, autonomous infrastructure to support its artificial intelligence is exponential growth. The night sky is becoming both a new spectacle and a new concern. Luminous trails crossing the atmosphere seen from various countries are not meteors or random re-entries, at least in what we're talking about here, okay? They're Starlink satellites from SpaceX, 
burning up as they return to Earth at an accelerated pace. According to astronomer Jonathan McDowell from the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, between one and four Starlink satellites have re-entered the atmosphere every day. In 2025, an unprecedented record. This is mainly because SpaceX's global constellation now makes up over 8,500 of the 12,000 active satellites in orbit. With this increase, up to five satellites could re-enter in the coming months. SpaceX, founded by Elon Musk in 2002, revolutionized aerospace with reusable rockets and a vast satellite network for global internet. However, this growth now causes a new invisible pollution, orbital pollution. Starlink satellites have a limited lifespan and they're designed to self-destruct at the end of that cycle, which happens when they completely burn up in the atmosphere. That's why, even though the glowing trails may seem alarming, some scientists say there's no direct risk to people here on the ground. But the study's author says the rising frequency is a warning sign. MacDuell told AirSky that every few months there are reports of space equipment that doesn't burn up completely and falls as debris. He finished by saying, We've been lucky so far, but it won't last forever, right? SpaceX aims to launch tens of thousands of satellites as soon as next decade. Experts warn that the growing number of objects in orbit increases the risk of collisions and, consequently, of debris drifting through space at speeds up to 28,000 kilometers per hour. Even if the Starlink satellites burn up completely, the process is not harmless, according to scientists. Some are studying the chemical effects of these re-entries into the upper atmosphere. During burn-up, satellites release aluminum oxide particles that may impact the ozone layer and change the upper atmosphere's thermal balance. Preliminary models indicate that continued metallic rain from burning satellites could have cumulative impacts on climate and atmospheric composition, a growing concern amid mega constellations. MacDonald sums up the uncertainty. We still don't know if the impact will be small enough to ignore or large enough to force us to rethink our entire orbital disposal strategy. For now, the spectacle of Elon Musk's stars burning on the horizon remains more beautiful than dangerous, all right? But as the constellation grows, yes, things could change. A major milestone in energy history has just been unveiled. Gauss Fusion in Berlin has unveiled the first full conceptual design for a commercial fusion power plant a key step in making fusion science a practical, clean, nearly limitless energy source. The conceptual design report, spanning over a thousand technical pages, details all systems and structures in the plant's concept. GIGA covers architecture, safety, systems engineering, life cycle operations, and radioactive waste management. This is the first attempt to turn fusion theory into an industrial model with such a comprehensive plan. The goal now is to move from the conceptual phase to detailed engineering. This clears the way for construction to begin on Europe's first generation of fusion power plants. The report states that building the first commercial plant will cost 15 to 18 billion euros and should be finished by the mid-2040s. This plant will use fusion reactors, a magnetic technology that can be controlled on a smaller scale. The same process that powers our sun fusion of light atomic nuclei above 100 million degrees Celsius releases massive energy without those long-lasting wastes that are typical of nuclear fission. These solutions will be crucial to make nuclear fusion not only technically possible, but also commercially viable. This point could decide who leads the global race for future energy. If Gauss Fusion's plan moves forward, Europe could inaugurate not just a new plant, but a new era, the era in which mankind learned to tame fire. Not the fire we already have here, but the fire of the stars. And the aerospace startup inversion, based in Los Angeles, has unveiled its most ambitious craft yet, the ARC, the first space delivery vehicle designed to transport cargo from orbit directly to any point on our planet. And that in less than 60 minutes. Unveiled at the company's factory, the project marks a major shift in global logistics. A re-entry spacecraft now promises to combine space speed with drone-like precision, allowing everything from the delivery of emergency medical kits to strategic defense components. The ARC measures 2.4 meters tall, 1.2 meters wide, about the size of a large table, and weighs just over 200 kilograms. This spacecraft carries up to 227 kilograms and can stay in orbit for five years, awaiting re-entry command. When activated, the ARC re-enters the atmosphere at hypersonic speeds, navigating up to a thousand kilometers per hour like a wingless aircraft. It lands precisely using parachutes, 
so no runways or landing structures are needed. This autonomy is vital for military and humanitarian missions, enabling the ARK to deliver supplies directly to conflict zones, remote islands, or disaster areas without needing airports or infrastructure. Because it uses non-toxic propulsion, it can be handled right after landing without chemical risk or protective gear. The ARK is an evolution of the Ray demonstration craft, launched by Inversion with SpaceX in 2024. The Ray model validated propulsion, solar energy, and orbital control, but couldn't return to Earth. With 60 engineers, the first test flight is set for 2026. Inversion believes that its technology could redefine the way critical goods are transported around the planet, thus making space a true part of the global logistics chain. Did you enjoy this episode? All the sources are listed in the description. All right, thank you so much for sticking with me up to this point in the video. Click on one of the two options appearing on your screen. Now, I'll see you in the next one. Maybe the suggestion can link to a video where I appear, not just my voice. Soon you'll see my ugly face on your screen again. Take care, bye.